Hey guys, today's video is all about the humble fern. This underappreciated plant is frankly an awesome house plant for so many reasons. I think like a lot of folks, and especially for me, when I first started out, I wasn't really very interested in ferns. They don't flower, they don't vine, whatever the case may have been, but now I have a totally different perspective on ferns. I think they really do provide an architectural feel with lots of texture and volume, and they really do have luscious foliage. I'll be going over crucial care tips with you guys and sharing some of my fern collection. Thanks for checking out this video. I'm Tyler. If you like what you're seeing or you find this video to be helpful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up or better yet, you can subscribe to my channel. As you can see, I have several ferns with me uh, right now and I also have this plant here which is called a Chinese Ming fern or an asparagus fern and this isn't quite actually a fern but I'll be sharing some crucial care tips and some tips on this plant as well. All right, so before jumping into this video, ferns are a bit different from other plants and they have different terms uh, to refer to the different parts of the plant. So if we take a look at this plant here, we can see that this is a fern um, and we refer to this whole piece, uh, individual piece here as a frond and the part in which the foliage starts to the tip is called a blade. Any sort of new growth we call a fiddlehead and ferns, uh, their root system is mainly uh, rhizomes. So those are some of the terms that we use when we are talking about ferns. Ferns are some of the oldest plants on the planet, which I think is completely fascinating. These plants are the most difficult to care for in terms of houseplants. However, there are several things that you're going to need to keep in mind. If you remember anything, let it be these three things. The first general tip that I have for you when it comes to caring for ferns is about watering, moisture, and humidity for these plants. Ferns cannot dry out. They need moist soil and relatively higher levels of humidity than uh, your average house plant. What I've chosen to do is because in my master bedroom, I use a large humidifier regularly every day, especially in the winter months. What I tend to do is keep all of my high humidity plants in there, which just keeps things a little bit more on the simple side uh, when it comes to care. Second, when it comes to lighting, ferns do need an ample amount of light. However, they do not need direct sunlight. So a good way to think about it is keep them within sight of a window, but not directly beside it. Uh, so you're avoiding that direct sunlight. And finally, it's generally a good idea to fertilize your ferns um, in the growing season. Beyond the sort of general guidelines that I've just given for ferns, uh, let me share with you the ferns that I have here with me today and touch on a couple of really important crucial care tips for each one of these plants. So this one here that I've already showed you is the Kimberly Queen Fern. Like all ferns, this one really loves that high humidity. So be sure to keep it away from any heat sources that may dry it out. A really great tip for the Kimberly Queen Fern is when you are fertilizing this plant, be sure to dilute that balanced fertilizer to about half so that you aren't damaging its roots. Now this guy is a Boston fern and he also needs to have that nice sort of moisture level in the soil. And uh, when it comes to this fern specifically, I would actually recommend only fertilizing it two to three times per year, unlike some of the advice I've given for some of the other ferns. Um, you know, this one just doesn't need to be fertilized that often. And then I have this bird's nests 
fern uh, here as well. So these plants in the wild typically grow on other plants like trees. So when it comes to potting these guys up and uh, soil mix, you really don't want to use uh, too much soil. You want to keep the container nice and small around the plant and really make sure that it's well draining. Uh, and that way you are doing uh, your best to replicate its sort of, um, you know, uh, natural environment. So again, a well draining uh, peat moss soil mix is sort of an ideal choice when it comes to the bird's nest fern. And in this video, I also wanted to include this spectacular asparagus fern, also known as a Chinese Ming fern. Without sounding too weird, I find this house plant to be extremely calming. Um, and I just, I absolutely adore this plant. So the thing with this asparagus fern is it's not actually a fern at all. It's a part of the asparagus family. And unlike ferns, this plant actually does flower in the spring. Now this plant actually originates from South Africa and it has the sort of luscious, soft, uh, evergreen type needles. Now, I think these plants can actually be quite a challenge to get your hands on. So if you do see one at your local nursery, uh, definitely uh, pick it up. Now, when it comes to crucial care tips for the asparagus fern, these plants can handle a lot more um, sunlight than uh, your typical fern. So a little bit of direct sunlight wouldn't be uh, you know, too much of an issue. Also, this plant is drought tolerant. So unlike ferns, uh, its soil doesn't need to sort of stay evenly moist. Um, you can water this guy about once to twice a week. And however, like ferns, they do love humidity. So they have that in common and you're definitely going to want to keep this plant nice and humid. So if it's not near humidifier, uh, misting it um, a couple times a week would be a great idea. Well, I hope you found this video useful. Miss you already. See you next Saturday.